Okay, looks like we are broadcasting live. Uh, welcome, everybody. We'll get started in just a moment. Okay, uh, it's the top of the hour, uh, so let's get started. Uh, welcome, uh, everybody. Hope you're having a fantastic uh, day and, and thanks for joining uh, Virtuoso's webinar on how to modernize cloud infrastructure and help launch, expand, and uh, grow your business. Uh, just a few housekeeping uh, items. Uh, please use the Q&A box uh, that's at the bottom uh, of the screen. At any point throughout the session, if you've got any questions, we'll be tracking them and uh, doing our best to respond to as many as we can uh, towards the end of the session. We want this to be interactive, as mentioned, so your questions are encouraged. Uh, you're welcome to get connected on social media, and uh, we'll also be live tweeting uh, during the session. Uh, and uh, just a disclaimer that we are gonna, gonna record this and everybody attending and perhaps those who couldn't make it, we'll all get a copy uh, of the recording following the session. Uh, just some introductions. Uh, my name is uh, David Clouser. I'm the director of the Americas for uh, Virtuoso. Uh, been here going on a, a couple of years now uh, and extremely passionate about the work that we're doing with our uh, service providers, cloud service providers, uh, MSPs and, and, and partners uh, across the world. Uh, now I'd like our, our two feature uh, speakers to introduce themselves. Uh, Sasha, uh, if you could introduce yourself first and then we'll go I to am, Joe. I am Sasha Siegman, leading pre-sales here at Virtuoso. Um, I have about uh, two decades muscle maintenance of enterprise and channel success with uh, some roles at IBM, Cisco, uh, Inger Micro, and now at Virtuoso. And I like to describe myself as a SaaS pass aficionado. I've implemented SaaS marketplaces for larger organizations such as uh, telcos, American Mobile, T-Mobile USA, and others, as well as compute infrastructure. Joe? Excellent. Yes, hello everyone. My name is Joe Morgan. I'm the owner of Joe's Data Center. Um, we're a data center in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, I've owned and operated this for uh, about uh, 12 years now, and we offer uh, dedicated or bare metal servers, virtual servers, and uh, co-location services. And then we're, uh, I'm going to talk to you later today about my journey into offering more cloud products and uh, backups. Awesome. Thanks, guys. And, and Sasha and I have had the opportunity to work with Joe uh, over the last uh, several months and, and, and throughout this year. And, and we're really excited to, to not just be able to share with you what Virtuoso is doing, but to be able to have one of our uh, newest uh, premier partners be here to also share uh, his experience. Uh, so looking, looking forward to hearing from, from both of you here. Uh, not too, not too uh, uh, soon, uh, shortly. Our agenda. Uh, I'm going to talk about what Virtuoso's hybrid portfolio and our technology is doing uh, for service providers. And we're going to talk about how a hybrid infrastructure can help grow your business, create new reoccurring revenue, align with market demand, create uh, new customers and more value to your existing customers. Then we're, we're going to get to understand Joe's data center uh, his previous state, his current state, and where he's heading, uh, and, and what his plans are with Virtuoso. And then Sasha will get into a little bit deeper technical discussion about the product architecture, some new features, some new releases. Uh, then we'll wrap. Uh, I encourage you all to stick through this hour session. We're going to have some pretty cool promotions and incentives at the end. And then we'll save uh, five, 10 minutes for QA. So, with that, uh, let's get started. Uh, for those who may not be familiar with Virtuoso, uh, we've been around for more than 20 years. We're a global software virtualization company with more than 450, 500 partners, right? We, we refer to our customers as partners because we're, we're truly delivering hosting and cloud solutions together. Global presence from Asia Pac to the Americas, North, South, Latin, Central, as well as EMEA uh, with, with world-class global customer support, sales architecture covered 
uh, in all major global regions. Uh, and some of the, the things, the value in, in how we determine and quantify success with partners such as, as Joe's are what, uh, how are we helping you increase your revenue, lower your costs, increase your profitability? How are we going to minimize and reduce churn, right? Huge discussion, whether it's a traditional VPS type of business, cloud services, colo, what can we do to grow that top line, add new logos, and not just reduce the churn of your existing, but to actually grow uh, and expand? To help what? To help accelerate time to market, whether it's competing with, with hyperscalers, fellow regional providers, or just extending new services. And, and more than anything, how do we make this entire experience easier and simpler and put this in your hands to allow you to innovate? In doing so, what are some of the common pain points and challenges that, that we hear uh, from our partners? Uh, very often, it, it's kind of cliche, but, but it's relevant and it's real and it happens daily. And that I've had VMware and those renewal costs or the licensing costs or the you know, licensing structure is, is just getting too expensive. It, it, it's eroding our, our profit margins or open source solutions are complex, or I don't want to have to hire an extended team to develop that. I need out of the box, simple solutions. And another big market challenge that we hear are the hyperscalers have a strong value proposition, but they're offshore or there are other challenges, or I just need to better compete with them. And then how do we do that? And what Joe and Sasha are going to talk to more in depth we enable with our virtualization platform the ability to take hyperconvergence with cloud uh, uh, solutions to deliver high performance compute, software defined storage, software defined networking in an out of the box self service multi tenant solution with the level of advanced monitoring, alerting, and reporting that you would expect from your hybrid cloud. And what does that look like in adopting a proven infrastructure? What that means is we are able to deliver a public cloud-like experience out of the box, multi-tenant architecture, self-service. With the history and the code and the engineering to make it easy to install, easy to maintain, maintain with flexible licensing models, and that's huge. Everything that we're talking about today in terms of licensing the software is elastic and it's based on consumption as you grow. So we're eliminating uh, higher upfront costs, capital expenditures, and allowing you to build your cloud uh, service uh, and infrastructure in line with current demand and growth with a single point of support. Many of you may vary with your internal or in-house support capabilities, but Virtuoso with those four or 500 global partners, one of the biggest value propositions that they, that they share with us and that they appreciate is our support. 724, 365 to be with you and your customers every step of the way. Uh, and a uh, production ready solution. This is not months of planning and a complex migration, uh, whether you have an existing environment that you're looking to replace or you're looking to pivot to extend a cloud services for your first time, right? This is a short time frame, out of the box, built on OpenStack uh, with, with a proven um, business model and, and foundation. And again, Sasha will talk more about that. So what are we really talking about and what would you be able to accomplish by leveraging Virtuoso's hybrid infrastructure? You're able to adopt, monetize, productize a single solution across a very wide spectrum of use cases, whether it's having to deliver private cloud or hybrid cloud integrated with the public cloud or if you'd like to extend DevOps, 
start taking advantage of, of Kubernetes, something that otherwise could be quite complex for you or your customers to have to organically do on their own. Now you can deliver them Kubernetes as a service out of the box. Another big one that, that gets a lot of traction is storage as a service, uh, as well as our virtuoso hybrid workspace, which is VDI as a service. Okay, Being able to take virtuoso's hybrid infrastructure and layer virtuoso's hybrid workspace on top of that to be able to help so many of those small, medium, and enterprise customers out there who are not just working remotely uh, temporarily anymore, uh, but it, 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 it's permanent, it's growing, and it's not going away. So, so that's uh, another uh, use case that we're seeing a lot of traction on. I'd be happy to talk with you more about that. Uh, I just wanna share with you quickly how it all comes together and what that management interface looks like. Again, Sasha will speak about it a bit more, but imagine a solution being able to deliver and to install the entire hyper-converge infrastructure across your data center stack, across commodity hardware that scales out based on your current and your future needs, and to have a management portal for your resources, your RAM, your storage, your networking. Uh, so this is an example of that. Uh, and, and with that, uh, hopefully I didn't take too much time going over the early slides because I'm really excited and want to make the most of the time we have uh, to let Joe and, and Sasha share a little bit more with you. Uh, so with that, I, I'm very proud, uh, again, to reintroduce and to turn this over to you, Joe. <clears throat> All right. Well, I want to thank uh, David and Sasha for you know letting me be here today and, and kind of tell my story. I'm hoping that uh, it'll relate to some of you. And this is my first time uh, being a speaker on a webinar, so you know I, I can see the attendees over there. And if you start dropping, it'll make me cry and it'll look really bad for me <laughs> doing this. So I'm going to keep an eye on that. But uh, I'm also going to wave. I heard that's kind of a new thing with COVID is that people have started waving in uh, in these things. But um, uh, but no, uh, I'm Joe Morgan. I'm the owner and founder of Joe's Data Center. Uh, I've been doing this since 2008, about 12 years now. Uh, I actually kind of started this not expecting to get into the data center business. My parents were web developers and they had their server being managed by a company. And I'd always been a, in the tech industry, but um, you know, I said, hey, you guys are paying way too much for that. I was very naive. I said, I can just build you a server and colo it in a facility and, and save you this money. And, uh, and I did that and it worked well. And uh, I ended up saying, man, I could do this again and save some other people some money and make some money while I'm doing it. And so I, I actually grew as a colo customer to the point where I leased my own space and then ended up taking my own colo customers on. And then uh, about five, six years ago, bought a building and, and really built it out as more of a traditional data center. Um, but obviously my story is probably not the typical way that data centers get started and, and become, you know, from here. You get a lot of MSPs that build data centers to support their products and you get a lot of data centers that, that already have this infrastructure need and then they're looking for ways to utilize that space better and kind of reach out. Um, my, my story is a little bit different there, but um, a couple of years ago, some of our MSP clients came to us and they said, hey, you know, we, we were losing customers that we were managing stuff for to cloud service providers. Um, you know, we need some type of offering white label um, that we can <clears throat> be able to offer our clients. And we don't necessarily always want to be feeding the giants. So we don't want to be throwing them in AWS. We don't want to be throwing them in Azure. We want to give them something that really feels like it's a product that we can put our name on and tell them as it being our product, but we need some partner to help with the infrastructure side of that. Um, and so being an infrastructure guy in the data center business, um, the first thing I started looking at is how do we utilize our existing infrastructure and our existing facility? Um, how do we provide something that's going to stand up to these big giant, you know, companies that are out there? Um, and, you know, how is that going to change the shared responsibility model um, for Joe's data center? And, and some of you out there will know what, the, what I mean by that. The MSPs, they have to deal with that more heavily. But, you know, from a data center standpoint, the shared responsibility model says, hey, 
who's responsible from the physical aspects of the data center all the way up to the software application running at the very top. Um, and so there's all of these layers to get from the bottom to the top. And, you know, depending on the product you're selling, uh, you have to determine which of those are in your realm and which of those are in the customer realm. And so selling co-location and data center services, we were very bo bottom of that list, right? We, we're, we're sitting at the infrastructure standpoint, not at the operating system, software patching, updates, that sort of stuff. Well, as we start looking at offering more managed products, backups or uh, infrastructure as a service, suddenly we, 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 we t you know, tick up that ladder and start becoming more responsible for those things. And so that was one of those challenges. And so we went on the hunt for that software application that would help us get there and, and lower our liability in those places that we were now going to be responsible for. And, and we approached it from two different aspects. One was infrastructure as a service, being able to do a cloud platform. And then the second was backups as a service, being able to offer backups, because I looked at that, that uh, shared responsibility model and I said, hey, I don't want to be liable for someone's data and not know that it isn't got the best backup solution possible sitting behind it and something that I can easily monitor and know, you know, we're going to be offering a solid product. So I approached the cloud infrastructure first. I didn't know about Virtuoso at the time. Um, I did do a lot of research at a lot of different products and ended up landing on one that I thought was, was, was perfect. And right off the bat, started kind of running into problems with compatibility of using our existing data center architecture. Um, you know, obviously I want to use my existing switches, racks, cabinets, that sort of stuff. And they had very strict requirements for what hardware could be used with their product. Um, we ended up purchasing an EMC VMAX SAN, huge upfront capital expense, not scalable, um, meaning I had to buy it all upfront. Uh, you can't work on the thing, right? So I'm used to having my own techs 24 seven in the data center who can go out there and pretty much service anything that we sell. Uh, nope, you gotta have an EMC engineer uh, to even log into the box. The password changes every four days or whatever. I mean, it's just ridiculous, you know? Um, so now all of a sudden we've got this big upfront expense. We've got these support contracts that we're tied into. Um, you know, basically the software is dictating our hardware purchasing decisions, which really shouldn't be done that way. And, uh, and, and, you know, and this is before we started dealing with the problems of integrating it into our billing and ticket system and training our staff, um, you know, and I really kind of felt like we got sold this bill of goods because we were sold all these different feature sets that this product was supposed to do. And then when we actually went to go use them, uh, we found out that it, it didn't exactly match the public cloud model. It didn't exactly have the support that they said that it was going to have. Um, you know, and, and so I was really kind of disheartened by the whole way this process went and not to mention the fact that, you know, we had already had, you know, uh, an Excel spreadsheet that showed that it was going to be nine to 12 months before we ever turned profit. Right. So every month that we ran into these problems and every month that there was a delay because the plug into our billing system didn't actually work the way it was supposed to, or, you know, we couldn't get the training to actually figure the stuff out, even though we paid for install and training or whatever, you know, every month I'm watching that time to us being able to recoup these costs go up. Um, and so the other side, you know, was a Cronus and the backup solution. Um, and so we became a, a service provider or a partnership through Acronis and it checked every box that, that I originally wanted, right? Which was, I could leverage their software, but I could put it on my infrastructure and my data center. Great. Um, it didn't require these expensive contracts. It uses commodity hardware. It already had plugins to work with our billing and ticket system. And I will say Acronis as a company did an amazing job of onboarding us training our staff, getting us with marketing people to get materials together for us and help us, you know, be ready for success. And it had a pricing model that said, hey, you're going to pay based on your consumption, right? So day one, you got nobody in that system, you're not paying, you know, anything or very little. And then as you build it, you, you know, you, it scales. And so it was just kind of this night and day difference between the two. And, uh, I, I was kind of fortunate enough to actually get on a call with uh, Sergey, the CEO of Acronis, and he wanted interested in our success and, you know, wanted to know 
you know, what our goals and what our plans were. And, and I was honest with them. I said, hey, I have these two different things in my life that I'm dealing with right now. And that's building out the Acronis infrastructure and the backups as a service and I'm in building out our cloud infrastructure. And I've just struggled with this cloud infrastructure. And at the time, Acronis had some uh, infrastructure stuff on the roadmap. And I said, hey, I really want to, you know, be a part of seeing that happen because, you know, my success with Acronis has just been so much smoother. And so he, uh, he said, well, you got to check out Virtuoso, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, you know, I know them from containers, but uh, open VC containers. But I said, I didn't realize they had an infrastructure as a service offering. And, and, and he, he said, hey, they are the engine that runs behind the storage of the Acronis infrastructure that's already sitting in your boxes at your facility. And he said they, you know, uh, basically designed that solution for exactly what you want. So uh, I reach out to Virtuoso. I get set up on a webinar. I start looking at it and I'm like, man, it's built on OpenStack, you know, which is one of the products we looked at doing. Um, but because of OpenStack has got this great backend infrastructure, um, you know, but like many open source products, it's not ready turnkey out of the box. And so we were really worried about taking that on. We'd have to build our own front end and we would have to, you know, what happens the first time we have to update from one version to the other, you know, you, you know, the level of technical expertise that would be required to stand that up. I think we even actually stood up our own OpenStack and deployed some VMs and stuff and just said, this is not production ready for us. Um, you know, but it's already, you know, Virtuoso VHI already built on OpenStack, which means it's got this extensive API. I mean, OpenStack was originally built API first uh, and then web interface second, which is part of the reason it wasn't ready for us, you know, but, um, um, you know, I'm a little bit of a stickler as to what I consider cloud products to be too. Like everybody says everything's the cloud, right? We, we get a customer that signs up, buys a single server with a single website on it. And they say, all of our stuff is in the cloud. And, uh, and so that was one of the problems that I ran into with my other product that I'd gone with was that um, they're basically, we're just better hypervisors, right? You know, they, they do VMs, you can get a VM uh, on there, but they weren't designed with that AWS, Azure, uh, true infrastructure as a service um, offering in mind. There was a lot of handholding that you would have to do as an MSP or as a data center in order to get that customer working. And, and when I experienced that, the first time a customer comes and says, hey, this is great. I can build everything in this interface. I want to throw my own private network to communicate between two VMs in oh, okay, well, I got to spin up a VLAN and I got to put it on the switch and I have to set up permissions and assign it to you as a customer. And, you know, none of that fits what I will say is true cloud, which NIST, the uh, National Institute of Standards, kind of clearly defines what is really cloud. And it's not, it's sitting in a data center somewhere. And so it's cloud. No, it's, you know, on-demand shared resources. Everybody kind of checks that box. If you got virtualization that allows failover, okay, it kind of fits that. The second is that rapidly provisioning piece. And the third is the minimal service provider interaction. And I think that's the piece that is lacking in the other products that are out there that Virtuoso does well, which is, hey, I shouldn't as a cloud provider be putting this, this wall between the client who's ready to build, ready to design their infrastructure, and making them come to me and say, hey, provision me more IPs or, hey, provision this VLAN for my private network. And, and so, you know, I kind of had that high bar going in and, and Virtuoso says, yep, yeah, right here in that client service portal, they can just say private network and they can choose the IP range and they can do it and, and it checked those boxes. And so, you know, I, I, I kind of went from this bad experience to going, oh my gosh, this is, how did I miss this? And, 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 and you know, that made it so much easier. And, and um, David, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I think we're only going on two, three months now. So I've, I've only been yeah. using Virtuoso from the very first interaction for two or three months. You know, I started this journey two years ago. Um, you know, I've been with Acronis for a year. I started that cl other cloud product two years ago. And we fully have Virtuoso up and running internally on uh, the new version 4.0. Um, we are deploying stuff internally as part of our testing. We just got done with training our staff, staff and doing certification. Um, we 
have that same scalable pricing model that I loved about Acronis. We've got that with uh, Virtuoso. I think the old system was based on the amount of cores that were in the system. Um, and uh, it had no bearing on what, with what we were using in that system whatsoever. And so every time I would put a new server online to try to prepare for that growth, we'd get this extra expense. Where with Virtuoso, it's very much what is actually being used in the system, which means that I can prepare my infrastructure without having to worry about how much that's gonna cost me before I've even sold it. Um, you know, just in a couple months, we've integrated with our billing and ticket system and we're starting to work through those workflows. And uh, I will say too, I've never seen such a partnership. Um, David is, I, I hate to call you a cheerleader, but I mean, he's basically, um, been our advocate internally who, you know, we get in these meetings and, and I expect that when there's not a piece of the software that does exactly what I expect them to just say, yeah, sorry, this is, wasn't designed for that, you know? And then I've got David over here going, Hey guys, what's wrong? You know, Joe says he needs to be able to do this. Let's figure this out, you know? And so it, it's, it's, it's just been this amazing experience and, and a night and day difference from where I, I was at before. And then I've got Sasha who, um, you know, he'll, set up a one-on-one -on -one with the technical guys and they'll say, Hey, Joe doesn't fully got his mind wrapped around this thing or his team is struggling getting this. Let's just get on a webinar and let's figure it out, you know? And, and it's that type of partnership that, you know, I, I I've never experienced, you know, maybe a Cronus was at that level, uh, you know, but you know, whatever relationship the two companies have, they'd have that same style of, of really trying to make, the product work for you day one and be profitable and be a partner in that. And, and so I, I do really appreciate um, that I found them. I appreciate that they're giving me this time here to sit and share my story. And, uh, you know, I'm really looking forward to kind of the next step, which is going to be migrating all of those existing clients out of the old product and into the new, uh, which they've already kind of helped me come up with a roadmap for. And, uh, and honestly, I'm going to save money. The, the monthly expense, once I get all those clients, is going to, is going to be less. And, uh, you know, with all those benefits that I kind of already just went through. So uh, I hope uh, my story has been helpful to some of you out there. I actually see more attendance now than I did when I started. So I didn't lose anybody. <laughs> we didn't lose. I'm not crying yet. And uh, no, uh, I, I appreciate the everybody taking their time to listen to me today. And uh, if you are thinking about getting into this, whether you're an MSP or you're uh, in the data center business, um, I would say reach out, get a demo set up. That's how I started. They'll walk you through it. They'll really take your individual need into heart and, and figure out whether the solution is going to work good for you. Um, if you don't have infrastructure yourself, if you're more on the managed side and, and, and you do need uh, assistance with figuring out where you're going to put your equipment, obviously uh, Joe's data center could maybe help you there. But even if you decide, hey, I can't region wise be in Kansas city, but I need some assistance in figuring out how my stuff's going to work in a data center. If I'm going to take that road, um, feel free to reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to help you with, you know, figuring out what to look for and, and kind of what to expect. Uh, even if you don't decide to put it with us. Um, and, uh, with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Sasha. Thank you. Yeah, no. And, and Sasha, just give me a second. Uh, so Joe, thanks. Uh, great job. Uh, it, you know, a big key to success is the partner as well. And, and you can talk about how great Virtuoso's technology is and, and the process, but uh, right, the partner and the quality of the staff and the resources that you guys have also make a huge difference. Uh, and together, when you're committed to accomplish something like this, uh, you're right, nothing can stop us. One quick question before we move on. You talk about the opportunity in, in the Heartland and in, in, in Missouri, but th this has also helped you accelerate some expansion considerations too, going coast to coast potentially, right? Yeah. No, yeah. So we uh, actually we, we put a Cronus in California because we needed those backups to be offsite. Um, and so, you know, with this, we're going, hey, we're going to spin up some Virtuoso VHI boxes there as well. Um, and, you know, and now we're going to be awful to offer stuff in either region. And then just this week, um, I signed contracts uh, for co-location in New York. Um, and so we're going to expand out and we'll be able to service the east and west coast. And then, of course, um, you know, our, our main bread and butter is our actual facility here in Kansas City, um, Missouri. But um, 
you know, yeah, the, uh, the ability to, you know, kind of rapidly scale this stuff using commodity hardware, you know, I wasn't worried about needing 10 racks worth of space to be able to put storage arrays on to make this thing work, right? I can go, hey, I, I already have this one cabinet that I did for my backup stuff in, you know, let's throw a couple, you know, five servers in there and get started with, you know, the public cloud offering in multi-region now and just kind of see how it grows, you know? So, um, you know, that would have never been possible, you know, with the other solution that required SANS and, you know, having to basically expense the entire operation without knowing whether it was ever going to be profitable. You know, I just would have never even done that, you know, but with this, it's like, why not stick it out there, grow it. Okay. And we're already seeing traction. We, we kind of, put this out to our MSPs and said, Hey, we're going to be able to offer this now. And, uh, and they're going, that's great. I already have a client that's, you know, has this requirement and I thought we were just going to have to throw them in somewhere else, but no, we can keep it inside our branded cloud. And, and, you know, so, you know, it's cool to see that this stuff is, uh, is actually working, you know? So. Yeah. Yeah. No, oh, great. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, and, and I'm sure there'll be some, some questions here, uh, at, at the end. Um, okay. So, uh, Sasha, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Let's talk a little bit more uh, about the infrastructure and the platform. Yeah, thank you very much, Joe. And, uh, you know, it's been a real pleasure. I'd, I'd like to return, uh, you know, what you said. Uh, um, we have just a, a really good fit here, um, you know, bullseye, right? So you needed uh, an infrastructure uh, that is flexible, that is modern, that has a nice look and user interface. And, you know, I looked at my calendar before the call. We had our first uh, meeting, I think, on July 11th or so. And within a meeting, uh, within a week, we were able to move forward. So this was really um, uh, exceptional. So um, what is Virtuoso Hybrid Infrastructure? Um, so we have um, at the very uh, bottom here on the on the bottom left, the Virtuoso Hypervisor and Virtuoso Storage. These are the, the two fundamental building blocks of the solution, right? So the Hypervisor does the compute part, and then Virtuoso Storage does the um, the soft the, the the software defined storage virtualization. Then at, uh, on on top of that, we have uh, some services such as identity service, the software defined network stack, the compute service implementation, image services, um, you know, the image repo for QCOWs, for uh, image files, for ISOs, things like that, the storage services, and then also Kubernetes as a service, uh, which is also very interesting, and load balancing as a service. So a full suite of software defined services built on top of virtual hypervisor and virtual storage. Then the next level up, we get multi-tenancy and orchestration. So our solution is able to support multiple tenants at the same time and automatically orchestrate services for these tenants. So uh, one of the things that uh, is really important for many uh, operations teams uh, is uh, monitoring and observability. And we have implemented uh, a Prometheus and Grafana interface that gives you excellent dashboards uh, that you can use to drill into the performance of the system and gives you really an edge uh, in terms of observability. And then uh, on top of that, we have an admin panel and a self-service UI. They look very similar. It's, it's the same user interface with different levels of privileges and, and role-based access control. And if you don't need uh, you know, an admin UI or a self-service UI, you can also integrate using the OpenStack API. Thank you, next slide. So this is really what it is. So this is the self-service portal. This is what Joe's customers are using. This is what uh, the what your tenant will use in the end. Um, a, a very slick user interface that allows you to create virtual machines, uh, Kubernetes clusters, uh, images, volumes, and so forth. And uh, I'd be happy to show you more in detail, uh, maybe as a follow-up to this webinar. Next slide, please. So Virtuoso Hybrid Infrastructure has basically five foundational components uh, that I will cover in the next seven to eight minutes. High performance compute, software defined storage, software defined networking, management with advanced monitoring and multi-tenancy and self-service. 
The Virtuoso KVM-based hypervisor is the Compute Foundation of VHI. So in addition to basic virtualization, Virtuoso has implemented performance improvements in other advanced features such as live migration using zero downtime migration technology. You can actually migrate a paused or running virtual machine from one Virtuoso host to another VHI host to another with zero downtime. Um, Virtuoso VHI, Virtuoso Hybrid Infrastructure, is fully SVVP. Uh, that's the Windows Server Virtualization Validation Program. The SVVP program enabled Virtuoso to prove that Microsoft customers running copies of Windows Server they have acquired and licensed from Microsoft directly can receive technical support for Windows Server in virtualized, virtualized environments running on top of VHI. Next slide, please. Software design, software defined storage. Um, Virtuoso storage uses your locally attached server disk drives to create clustered storage and keeps your data safe. Joe mentioned earlier he had a uh, he had purchased a specific piece of hardware uh, for a SAN, and that is you know one way of doing things. We also do it the other way, which is we just use a bunch of disks and virtualize those. We provide Amazon S3 compatible object storage, um, iSCSI block storage, NFS servers that are clustered, and all of that using a state-of-the-art user interface. Efficient storage algorithms such as erasure coding and uh, erasure encoding allow to reduce disk overhead. Erasure coding is a method of data protection where uh, data is broken into fragments, um, and those fragments are expanded and encoded with redundant data pieces and stored across a set of different locations or storage media. VHI implements both erasure coding and block level replication. With Virtuoso Storage, you can build highly available all flash or even all NVMe based storage tiers that you can package as performance tiers. And then for example, sell them at different price points to clients. Next slide, please. Software-defined networking. VHI provides full private networking and virtual distributed switching, and clients can create and manage virtual networks in a self-service fashion. Distributed switching. VHI supports distributed virtual switching on the basis of Open vSwitch, and that runs on every compute node and forwards traffic, network traffic between virtual machines on the same node and between virtual machines and infrastructure networks. Distributed virtual switching provides centralized management and monitoring of virtual network configuration across all nodes in the compute cluster. Distributed virtual routing used for virtual network connectivity enables placing virtual routers on compute nodes and routing VM traffic directly from hosting nodes. In the DNAT destination net scenario, a floating IP is assigned directly to the VM's network interface. And if source net, S net is used, then traffic is routed via the management nodes. Integrated DHCP and IP management. With IP address management enabled, VMs connected to the network will automatically be assigned IP addresses from allocation pools by the built-in DHCP server, and they can even use custom DNS servers. Load balancing as a service. Uh, VHI offers load balancing as a service for the compute infrastructure. Load balancing ensures fault tolerance and improves performance of web applications by distributing incoming network traffic across virtual machines from a balancing pool. A load balancer receives and then routes incoming requests to a suitable VM based on a configured balancing algorithm and VM health. Next slide, please. Management with advanced monitoring, clustered management for all components. A single management console provides clustered management without a single point of failure. Ready kernel updates without reboot. Virtuoso Ready Kernel is a K-patch based service shipped with Virtuoso Hybrid Server and Virtuoso Hybrid Infrastructure. It's available out of the box on hardware nodes with active licenses. A web console for VMs allows to use a graphical user interface to directly interact with the virtual machine and run through configuration as if you were sitting in front of the server running it. 
It has a 100% OpenStack compatible API. So there's no need to learn a new API. And you heard Joe say this earlier. So he tried to implement his OpenStack implementation. So he was familiar with the way how OpenStack works and how the OpenStack API works as well. So use what you already know, and maybe you have some integration with your own infrastructure already. The OpenStack API allows you to rapidly deploy infrastructure as code, leading to faster time to deployment and production, and therefore faster time to money. Um, advanced monitoring based on Prometheus and Grafana. These open source components provide monitoring and observability for your entire VHI infrastructure. Chances are uh, your ops team already has had a look at Grafana and knows how to use it. Uh, Pre-configured dashboards allow you to drill quickly into performance issues. Automated centralized updates. So all the nodes are updated centrally through the click of a button, it's very easy. Maintenance mode is a, a huge uh, improvement as well. It allows you to remove a node from active running workloads and perform system management tasks, such as removing defective disks or adding memory or performing, performing any other type of maintenance. Next slide, please. Uh, Multi-tenancy and self-service. Self-service portal for tenant user. So the self-service portal allows tenants to completely manage their own infrastructure. It's not, um, if that's not what you want, you can provide an integration into custom self-service portals by API and integration using the OpenStack APIs. You have isolated private networks for each tenant. This keeps everyone's infrastructure separate on the network level. RBAC, RBAC, role-based access control model for tenants. This defines who can do what on the platform. And we have multiple billing models. So for example, you could provide a predefined set of resources for a tenant or project, say 16 vCPUs, 32 gigs of RAM, 100 gigabyte of disk space, and have the customer manage that pool or provide unlimited resources that customers can use without constraints. Next slide. Ready kernel. Virtuoso Ready Kernel is a K-Patch based service shipped with Virtuoso Hybrid Server and Virtuoso Hybrid Infrastructure. It's available out of the box on hardware notes with active licenses. Another way to put it is it enables your operations team to run rebootless infrastructure updates. VHI takes care of downloading and applying these updates fully automatic. This feature is a tremendous relief for ops teams that have to manage large mission critical infrastructure. Next slide, please. So, VHI 4.0, what's new? Uh, for those uh, of you that have heard about the product, all of this is new. I understand that, uh, but I briefly want to cover uh, two features here. So one is uh, QoS policies for VM volumes. For VM volumes, This feature allows to set limits on IOPS, um, input output operations per second, and disk throughput by volume. So if you want to create restrictions on how much load a tenant can put on the uh, IO, on the disks, uh, that is a, a very convenient way to do that. You can define uh, IOPS per second as well as throughput in megabytes a second. And lastly, uh, before I come to an end here, uh, dashboard for performance and statistics charts for S3 and NFS. So we continue to add dashboards to Grafana to add to instrumentations and make the product easier to understand visually. So this will give you the ability to at a glance, see how your infrastructure performs, where performance uh, bottlenecks are and what possibly needs to be done to remedy those. So I hope this uh, brief overview uh, in the last uh, nine and a half minutes was useful for you. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them. I'd be happy to also show the platform um, after um, this webinar ends. Back to you, David. Great. Thanks, Sasha. As I was following along with you, I was just thinking as you're talking through some of those slides, uh, it would be great to be able to show each of you uh, a demonstration of this. Uh, and that's exactly how we started with Joe. Uh, so hopefully uh, we'll be able to connect with you, set up a private demonstration for you to go uh, into each of those further. But um, thank you, Sasha. D Joe, before I move on, any, any comments or, or, or anything that you wanted to speak to uh, on, on this slide or, or, or no, should I move on? Yeah, I will say too on, on on doing the demo, I would highly uh, recommend that. You know, sometimes we're all strapped for time, and we you know sitting through an entire demo. They were super flexible with me, at least when it came to I was able to say, "Hey, 
here's the, the expertise level we're at. Here's the thing specific we were looking for. And they said, okay, we're going to skip this whole thing. And they really drilled down and, and let us just kind of focus on the stuff we needed to know. And so don't feel like uh, it's this huge commitment to, to do that. It, uh, it was what ended up getting us to switch actually was kind of actually seeing the platform and getting in there and going, holy smokes, this is exactly what we're used to with Acronis when it came to the back end side. And this is exactly what I wanted on the front end side for my clients. And so, you know, sometimes you just, you have to see it to, to really understand it. And so I, I'd, I'd highly recommend yeah. that. Yep. Awesome. Thanks. Okay. Uh, and, and thanks again, Sasha. Uh, okay. So uh, let's, um, did I skip one slide? Nope. All right. So uh, as we wrap up here, uh, just a couple more slides, and, and then I see some questions. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely get to those. Uh, but uh, as Joe talked about, we want to be your partner uh, and, and help um, modernize, optimize, but also be a part uh, of, of driving uh, new success and new business with you. So uh, we encourage each of you, anybody who uh, schedules a demo or a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Virtuoso by the end of this month, uh, we're going to send you some cool Virtuoso and Joe's Data Center uh, branded uh, gifts uh, and, and care packages, as, as well as a $50 uh, dollar, uh, Visa gift card. So when uh, Virtuoso's marketing sends you the recording to this later today, just reply. Uh, you'll be getting it from Christine. Uh, let us know when you're available, and we, we, uh, we would love to send you this care package. Uh, but more importantly, have a, a deeper discussion with you about your business uh, and how we can help uh, and become partners just as we've done um, with Joe. So with that, we've got just under 15 minutes uh, for some q and A. I I saw the one question that came in, Joe and Sasha, is talk about the infrastructure sizing and requirements. Right, we, we see how Joe went from a monolithic SAN to cloud approach, right, to a hyper-converged commodity hardware scale-out approach. Um, talk about the sizing of the hardware. Was it three nodes, five nodes, and what went into that? Maybe Joe, you, you could uh, speak to that initially? Sure. Um, so I know this from my certification test, the smallest possible instance of, uh, virtuoso would be a single node. Um, you know, obviously you probably wouldn't want to do that from a reliability of storage standpoint. Um, you know, you're going to want at least three to five. Um, but you know, you're talking about commodity servers, right? So five servers is not that big for, for, uh, um, setting up a, an offering like this. Um, but if you, if you were just wanting to get in there and look at it and, you know, we did this for our developers, you can install it on a single machine, the enti entire install process, you know, uh, probably the hardest part is figuring out your own internal infrastructure, networking and IP address ranges and stuff. But otherwise, you know, install takes 20, 30 minutes. Um, you could have a web interface, both on the back end uh, at that point in time and a, a client portal at that point in time where you can actually go deploy a VM or hit, you know, deploy a, a Kubernetes cluster and it's going to de de deploy 10 VMs for you. You know, I'd say within a, an hour or two, you should, you should be at that point if you were just starting with a single, single node. Um, and obviously scalability wise, you can just keep adding servers to grow the node and it, it, it just incorporates those new resources and, and expands it. Um, there's definitely considerations for, you know, how you want the storage to work and, and that sort of thing. But, uh, you know, I don't know any other product that you can download an ISO, throw it on a flash drive and, and be at that point for a cloud infrastructure type of, 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 of system, especially OpenStack on the back end uh, in that short of time period, you know? Um, yeah. So, uh, I would say that's probably kind of, our experience with really designing the system, getting it where we wanted uh, was a little bit longer than that, obviously, because we, we purchased hardware just for this and, uh, uh, and we, had, we wanted every bell and whistle, you know, but, but even then it was 90% planning and then the implementation was just install, check the right boxes and then it's, it's, it's there, you know. I don't know yeah. if that's a question or not. No, but. yeah, that, that, that's great. Sa Sasha, I, I see you posted our documentation link in the chat um, yeah. as well, but uh, go yeah. ahead. 
Shout out to our documentation department. So I, I, what I really like about the product is um, also the documentation. Uh, it's, it's really well written and organized. Um, so in terms of hardware requirements, um, here's what you need to start. Uh, so Joe already mentioned the minimum, so it's one node, but let's just say you have a lab environment and you just wanna see how does this work? How, how does failover, for example, uh, function? Obviously you need you know, more than one node for that. So let's start with three nodes for a lab environment. Take your commodity hardware, whatever old hardware you have. Is it going to break speed records? Probably not if it's really old, but uh, at least you can get started. Um, you do need at least two physical drives per node. Uh, otherwise, um, the, the, the storage component will not allow you to, to move uh, forward with the installation of that. So those are really the only gotchas. Uh, get three nodes, uh, put two nodes or put two drives into each of those uh, uh, nodes, um, download the ISO, um, and you can do this either you know self-guided uh, by using the documentation or you get in touch with me. Um, and I'll uh, be happy to guide you through uh, an evaluation. Yeah. And the other thing that comes to mind that I, I'll share with, with our, our partners as I'm listening to you and Joe is it's a process, guys, right? Customer success and partner enablement is, is huge to us. And I think of the journey with Joe over the, the last few months. Uh, the, the, the minute we kick this off, right, we've got project management designed. We've got weekly maybe extending to bi-weekly calls, but Joe and Sasha, I can think of at least two or three sessions where, you know, we had our core engineering, product management, Joe's team, Sasha involved, where we're debating and we're talking through what are the various use cases? What is the performance profile? What is the balance of cost versus right performance? How am I going to architect this? What's the best type of drives? What's right, where it really is collaborative and once you get back to the base foundation uh, of, of you can now use commodity hardware with true HCI and, and scale out, it really is dependent on the use cases we're going to be focusing on. But it's a process, I guess, is what I was thinking. Yes? It's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's crazy to me to think that before we ever signed a contract or before we ever paid you a dime, you know, we had the engineers who were you know, leading the development of this stuff on a call with us on a weekly basis. I don't know how they have the time to get on a call with me like that, but we were going, Hey, here's the issues we've got or that we've seen. And you're talking to the person who knows, you know, you're not talking to a salesperson who's saying, Oh yeah, we can do this. And then getting an email that says, Oh, sorry, this is not supported. I mean, right there, you know, my tech guy sitting beside me or on a, on a call like this and we've got the answers. So it, it you know, it's, it really is a partnership. And I, you know, I don't know how you could ever be successful with any complicated piece of infrastructure like this offering is without, you know, having those experts available and having it ready and, and having a product that really is turnkey like this one is. So. Cool. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that. Okay. A uh, couple more questions. I, I see one that's, that's asking about ticketing and, and billing. I, I know you kind of referenced it with WHMCS, but, do you want to speak to that a little bit more, Joe? So I think the kind of the three biggest players in the web hosting business um, are definitely um, WHMCS, Ubersmith, and Hostbill. Um, I have almost no experience with Hostbill, but I know a lot of the integration that happens, they kind of develop themselves. And so it's pretty built directly into the system. Um, anybody who's familiar with WHMCS will know that they are a very plug-in driven product. Um, and there's one company that always comes to mind when it comes to plugins for WHMCS, and that's Modules Garden. Um, we started out with Ubersmith, and we didn't like the billing model that they went to, which is the reason that we eventually moved to WHMCS. Um, they, and, uh, and, and I, can't, I can definitely say that I, I'd never want to look back. Um, WHMCS has been great for us from both a price standpoint and our own internal developers were able to make our own plugins uh, in combination with modules garden modules that we've got. And I know modules garden um, already had an open stack module um, bef and, uh, and because of the API of OpenStack, I think it, it was compatible with uh, Virtuoso right off the bat. And that, that fits maybe more of the VPS private cloud model, I think a little bit better. And then um, I'm assuming Virtuoso uh, 
got with with them to to build the the module we're using now for our cloud which is um, more of a get the client into the system and get them using the virtuoso side of it so it just acts as kind of a gateway between um, you know the customer orders through WHMCS at the end of the order process they're, they're given a button to be able to log in to virtuoso and then they provision everything and do everything through that client portal that you kind of saw a few images of her earlier in the slides um, and then it's actually um, pulling real-time usage and data from that so you can set it up to either bill based on a set of resources like saucer mentioned um, I'm gonna set quotas and just sell them a package and it's gonna be a fixed monthly price or you can use it like we did because we wanted to be more in line with AWS and Azure and all those where it's, hey, it's billing them based off of the actual hourly usage, uh, calculating that and then sending them an invoice at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. Yep, awesome. All right, great. And, and, and Sasha, th this, this is, is your, your background. You come uh, from architecting very large uh, uh, systems uh, with uh, uh, Connect. So, uh, I've seen firsthand how your methodology, process, and approach really complements virtuoso hybrid infrastructure to help partners like Joe with that last mile, uh, whatever the billing and, and the integration is going to be. Yeah, um, before in my previous role, I uh, was a solution architect for um, Ingram Micro, uh, the Cloud Blue division. And, um, you know, software sales uh, or infrastructure projects uh, can become very complicated, right? And um, so as, as the domain expert, I've, I've done uh, a few of these uh, rollouts uh, with a variety of clients ranging from, you know, uh, large to very large, uh, to be honest. And uh, it is a process to get something into production so that it actually uh, generates revenue is, uh, it's, it's not easy, right? But uh, we have a methodology. We have the team that will, uh, you know, join our partners in, in getting them to the starting line so that this all makes sense for everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. All right, we, uh, oh, sorry, were you gonna say something? Sasha? Um, I was going to uh, 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 connect and uh, maybe uh, talk about the next question here, which is a, a hardware related question. Can I take that? Sure. Yeah, I, I better Ooh. say yes to my, my, my SE for a hardware related question. Can we use a third party for storage and how does it work with virtuoso storage? So um, we heard earlier that that Joe had some some piece of hardware, um, a, a storage area network um, a hardware box uh, that is not really suitable uh, for virtuoso hybrid server. So there are two basic roles uh, in, in our storage infrastructure. That's a storage role and then the metadata role. And then we have two supplemental roles, which are uh, SSD cache and then operating system. So one of the drives that uh, is put into each of the nodes is the operating system drive. It's not available for virtuoso storage. The way that our storage algorithm works is optimized for JBots, just a bunch of drives that are locally attached to the system. Um, because of the way we have implemented the algorithms, uh, it is, uh, you know, it's, it's a very good architectural fit for locally attached drives. Can you use third-party devices? Yes, you can, but will you get all of the benefits that we have designed the solution for out of that third-party solution? The answer is probably not. And the reason for that is um, we can control uh, where data resides uh, on the nodes, on which drive. And these are things that are already abstracted away if you use a hardware box. So for example, a storage mm -hmm. area network uh, or a box will uh, put all of the data redundancy requirements uh, it provides, uh, uh, you know, it will manage this on their own um, and your performance will not be as good as uh, with our storage solution. And, mm -hmm. and it's about scalability, you know. Um, exactly. I, I frequent the OpenStack forms and, you know, the reason that the system is being built, I mean, they use Ceph and, and, and Virtuoso has their own that I think is actually performs better than Ceph. But, uh, um, you know, the reason that they went the direction of using commodity hardware was, hey, you shouldn't be relying on that one provider uh, and having that support contract through them. And you should be able to scale this as needed. And it shouldn't mean going and buying a, uh, a $4 million piece of equipment, or, you know, even if you're buying a smaller SAN, um, it shouldn't it should require that for you to be able to make marginal upgrades to your system. You know, you should be able to grow this thing with customer demand. And, and that just isn't possible using 
any of the third party, you know, uh, storage solutions that I've, I've seen, um, not to the degree of just throw up another server with some extra disks in it and boom, you've just extorted, expanded your IOPS, you've expanded your storage space, you've added another storage tier possibly of a different storage type. You know, you, you're never gonna be able to do that with, with you know, any of your traditional NAS or SAN products, that, at least not that I've uh, looked at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a maturity and, and just the fundamental transformation of architecture. We, we go from having the core data center without centralized storage and SANs, and now we have the emergence of SANs, and now we have the emergence of cloud and introduction of converged transformation, right? Automating our entire data center stack, SAN included. And, and now we've all heard, right, the last 10 plus years uh, with, with the introduction of hyperconvergence, initially at the edge, now at the core cloud and edge to be able to unlock those constraints and limitations of monolithic expensive SANs or NASes into commodity scale out hardware. Buy what you need today for processing, for storage, for networking, hyper-converged stack with Virtuoso's hybrid cloud, and then add the node storage and compute as we scale and add more customers. Right, guys? Yeah, and be competitive, right? Like the hardware technology is changing daily. If, if something great, new, and amazing comes out tomorrow, I can throw that into my cloud, you know, but there's no way I'm ever slapping that in my sand, you know? So. Right. Right. Okay. Sasha, were you going to say something? Uh, no. Uh, other than okay. top of the hour. Uh, we the have to inform yeah. Top of the hour. Okay. Uh, I can't thank you all enough for uh, uh, attending. Uh, just a quick plug. Uh, Acronis' Cyber Summit uh, is today, tomorrow, and Wednesday. So if you're not already registered, uh, please sign up. Virtual, so we'll have a virtual booth there. Thank you, Joe, uh, for, for uh, participating today. We will send you a recorded version of this, and we look forward to uh, speaking uh, with each of you further. Have a great rest of the week. Thanks again. Thanks. Thank you all. Bye-bye.